Hello, traders. It is 8.04 a.m. Chicago time on this wonderful, beautiful Tuesday here in Chicago. It is uh, the 16th of April, 2024. This is episode 2,657. We didn't quite make it to 3,000, uh, but this is also the series finale. This is the last show we're doing together. There will not be a Trader Bite tomorrow or ever again. Um, thanks for joining me today. I want to remind you that uh, derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Hopefully the sound's coming across pretty well. Uh, let's get into it, folks. Uh, I have several things I want to cover. An immediate uh, thing that I want to uh, go over with you before we look at the market together one last time, one last time, um, is I want to leave you with some pointers on where to go from here. And um, if you wish to follow my uh, pointers, if you like, but I've got this for you here. Um, this is a uh, deck that I prepared uh, just because I want to make sure I leave you with some place to go. Um, so these are five pointers. I'm going to let you know where I'm going to be, what I'm doing, a little bit of what I'm doing. So we'll cover that in about five minutes. Then we'll jump right into the winner of the 15-inch MacBook Air M2. That uh, winner has been selected. Uh, we'll, we just spun the wheel. There were probably, I don't know, three, maybe 400. I didn't look. Uh, it looks like from the wheel about 300 or so, 300, 400 participants. If you didn't put your name in, you missed out. Um, so here's uh, here are the pointers that I'm going to leave you with here. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, John Pierannunzi, who is a CT maven or head trader at Convergent Trading, uh, has been doing a great job posting a video for Convergent members, and uh, I'm working with him to have those available to the public. It's called The Opening Swing. The Opening Swing, uh, it is uh, something that's prepared by Convergent Trading, and it's on Convergent Trading's channel. To go see it, to go see today's, to have an idea of what John is covering, it's going to be very, very similar to the Trader Bite, uh, except uh, a younger, fitter, and good-looking guy is doing it. Um, to, to follow that, go and subscribe to or bookmark go to ct.pro forward slash opening swing. This drops you into the playlist for the show. It'll be released early. It will generally come out a little bit earlier than when I'm starting. So those of you who have been complaining for the last 12 years that I should start earlier, you might get your way. Uh, that's the first pointer I have for you. The second pointer I have, so again, the opening swing. If you want to have someone to listen to, John is a, just a fantastic trader, a professional. He used to be in the Euro dollar pit, uh, started out as a runner and traded prop and basically uh, went through the grinder as I did of becoming a professional trader. He's based in Pittsburgh, but is extremely familiar with the business and just really excellent at executing trades. This is why he's a maven at Convergent. The other maven is a balanced trader, uh, Jan, who has also has a prop background. Um, that's the other guy who covers a lot of markets. He covers whatever's moving. Uh, you can find those guys, both those guys, in the Maven's chat room under Convergent Trading. The second thing is Convergent Trading. So I want to point you to this focus community that uh, um, was started in 2018. There are a lot of members in this community, and there's probably going to be a discount deal. I would strongly suggest you follow on Twitter, Conv Trading, C O N V Trading. Um, on Twitter, but you can join the community by going to go to ct.pro 
slash join. I want to remind you that I'm an owner of this community, so there is a material conflict of interest here. I'm recommending something that I own, but the reason I started it and own it is because I want to have a better product or a better community, no noise, um, and many, many services, including news services, market stats reports, as you see in the image here, which are updated once a month for a variety of products, about, I don't know, maybe eight or nine or 10 products. Um, we're statistical traders, so we rely on these reports. There are chart books and definitions and my Edge Pro X templates and all of that stuff is within the community, including accountability partner, um, board, uh, journals, there's a ton in there. If you are finding that you're not making a lot of progress and you're kind of spinning your wheels and you're lost in the, in, in the reddits and the fin twits and the whatever the world, you should at least take uh, a month at convergent and see what's there. You'll have access to all of the videos and so on. If you take a quarterly membership, you'll automatically be able to do the trade right program, which will help you uh, organize your trading business. Uh, that's also highly recommended. Again, go to ct.pro forward slash join. The next one I have is I'm going to be spending a fair amount of time with Ian uh, at EdgeClear on this podcast called Behind the Screens. Um, this, this, is, uh, this is an area I want to move and focus on uh, just providing really um, information for newcomers into the futures business or those who've been trading a while to discuss some, some things that a lot of people just kind of skirt over. We'll talk about trading. We'll talk about the trading as a business, brokerage, clearing, exchanges, selecting products, growing as a trader, all that stuff. It'll be covered in behind the screens. You can go um, take a look at past events by uh, pointing your browser to myed.ge, myedge, myed.ge forward slash BTS, like the South Korean band. Um, and uh, see the old episodes. Of course, the best thing you can do is turn on your Spotify or your uh, iTunes or whatever, wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe to Behind the Screens. Uh, it is does not have any ads or anything like that. We dive right into trading content with this podcast. The other piece is to point you back at my Twitter uh, account or X account. I don't like calling it X. Um, been using it for 17 years as Twitter. Uh, FT71.com forward slash follow. This will drop you into my Twitter and have you follow after you log in. Follow there to get updates on what's going on and what's uh, what I'm what I'm working on and so on. There's a lot that I'm working on. There's a lot that I want to do and change about the industry, and I'm uh, making a strong effort in that end uh, to just make it a better um, a better place to trade. I, I think futures are um, they're not suitable for all uh, traders, but I just believe they're a much more level field than equities, Forex, CFDs, and, and others because it's all traded and cleared on the same, uh, on one exchange, an impartial exchange, and everybody's got the same rules to abide by. So follow ft71.com forward slash follow, and you'll get my news when it comes up. I'll be more active on Twitter also, I have a little bit more time. And then of course, for brokerage, uh, I, I um, invite you to become a member of EdgeClear. Again, I own EdgeClear, so there's a material conflict of interest for that recommendation. Full disclosure, I prefer to be transparent. But I started a brokerage um, four years ago and it's, uh, it's really taken off a fantastic brand, over 200 Google five-star reviews, fantastic team. You're assigned a broker and it's the, the brokers, most of the brokers here are traders 
and they understand what traders go to, go through, but they also understand the, the industry, your needs, and will match you with your, your best clearing solution and, and uh, commission structure and so on. You can get more information at edgeclear.com. Uh, and then finally, I want to tell you, and there's a, there's a pinned thread from like two or three years ago, I don't know, on my Twitter that talks about this very subject. It's got four, five, six hundred thousand um, views um, is risk. If you, you have to have a plan, please don't trade without considering the importance of having a risk plan, especially in futures because of the leverage. We're trading on margin. A lot of you are controlling a product that's worth over $250,000 and you're controlling it per contract, that's $250,000 per contract, and you're controlling it with $500 worth of equity uh, uh, per, per contract at some of these other brokers. I think this is suicidal. Uh, this, is not, this is not reasonable. Make sure you have a good plan, and you're with a broker that is helping you secure your risk through auto liquidation by not giving customers uh, that much leverage. Remember, your money, even though it is not commingled with your clearing firm's money, it is part of a pool of everybody else's money. And so, all these people that are trading for three, four, five hundred dollars per contract, or fifty dollars uh, on the ES or NQ, or fifty dollars for the micro products, you know, it doesn't take very many of them to wipe away um, the the pool of money that you're. The, the pool of funds that your money is a part of. So it's just smarter to go to those brokerages that are minding their risk first, just like traders should mind their risk first. So make sure you have a plan, make sure you have circuit breakers that cause you to stop when you're losing and make sure you have a risk plan in place because without it, you're just gambling. Uh, and that's a huge part of the trade right program at Convergent. And it's a big part of the uh, reason I came online in 2008 and started to talk about gambling versus trading. Okay, so these are the pointers I'm going to leave you with. You have them. You can watch this as many times as you like. Um, now let's take a look at the winner for the MacBook Air. Uh, we're giving that away today. We've selected a winner. The deadline for uh, for um, entering your name was about a half or 45 minutes ago. Here's the winner. Well, that didn't go perfectly well. There it is. Spin, 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 spin. And, well, <laughs> hang on. Is this the right video? The The winner is actually, I think it might have been spun twice for the runner up. The video didn't start from the beginning, I think. There it is, UT Trader with Darren being the runner up. Okay, so UT Trader is the winner of the 15 inch MacBook Air. I hear that UT Trader is, uh, is um, might be a Convergent member, actually. But uh, UT Trader, we're going to look for a call from EdgeClear to arrange to get this MacBook Air to you. Now, let's look at the market, okay? Is everybody, is everybody um, satisfied with how we ended this thing? Uh, hopefully, uh, again, you have the opening swing to go to. Uh, to listen to your morning, um, your morning uh, broadcast, morning prep with John, and of course, if you're a part of Convergent, you can always interact with John in the chat room, in the forum, in all of these places. Let's look at the markets now. Here we go. So, what did we do here? Uh, we had, you know, the scare from. The coming into the weekend with Iran retaliating for Israel having attacked 
Iran's consulate and killed off a, a key general um, and I think six others of its military who are at the consulate in Syria. Uh, Israel did not take credit for that attack, but uh, Iran is uh, very clear that this, this is who the aggressor was. Um, and so Iran had committed to retaliate over the weekend. So the market went into a bit of a risk off, a risk off mode going into the weekend ahead of this. Now, I wrote this long paragraph yesterday at Convergent very early on to talk about my thoughts and what I'm gathering about this situation and, and my conclusion before, it wasn't yesterday, it was Sunday, Sunday afternoon at about two o'clock Chicago time, saying, yeah, this is not how war start. Um, you don't telegraph the attack. You don't, uh, you don't give, give the enemy time to get in place. Either that or somebody um, forgot to read their art of war. And the whole thing is a theatrical display, not only by Iran, but by Israel, United States, allies, and all this stuff. And it's for our enjoyment. Of course, we're all paying for it through our taxes. But the whole thing is a bit of a sham. Uh, Iran launched like 300 drones or missiles and all this stuff, all, most of which got shot down, some of which made it through, but they landed in Arab countries. There was minimal damage from this attack. And then the market gapped up in crude, gapped a little bit in, in uh, indices, and it went right back to settlement to Friday. The market couldn't care less about what happened there. So it's just absolutely nonsense. And you could see right through it. It's just posturing. Um, and, and so now Israel's calculating its retaliation for having been attacked. And now it's like, well, you know, who's attacking whom, who started it, all that stuff. But the fact is, these people are just playing with the lives of their population and it's just a shame that humanity hasn't grown past this absolute nonsense um, of just murdering people everywhere um, in, in the name of sovereignty, in the name of God, in the name of many things. So it's pretty disgusting. In any case, uh, the market yesterday opened. It poked up a little bit, but it was very clear early on that the ES had no interest on the buy side. We could see that immediately it came off the open. The open was left near the top of where we ended up on Friday. So we ended up gapping up and not continuing at all. Uh, we took back what we did. This, remember, between these lines here is a big balance zone here in the ES. And we tried to move there. And as soon as we broke through the 5,200, to me, it was all selling. Uh, we had weak structures that were left behind on uh, yesterday's auction. Uh, and sellers just dominated. And it was just very obvious that we need to pull away the buy, uh, the buy button was something we needed to stay away from. So the posture yesterday for trading was mainly selling uh, or neutral. You're either sitting on your hands or you're selling. Uh, we managed to break Friday's low and it, the, the auction accelerated down, leaving us with more single prints. We managed to clean up the 5125 double TPO low from way back, I think it was I don't know, John, what was it? Uh, the double TPO, was it like early March or February or something? The double TPO lows or highs are considered weak lows or highs. We clean that up and it happens to be exactly where the bottom of the singles were. So we ended up breaking through, coming back, retesting that area. So I have it marked with this uh, band right here, retesting the area and then continuing lower. A really important area yesterday where there was a ton of fighting um, and it's an area you want to watch for today is this is this box right here. 
is this box right here. This is really uh, an important area for sellers to defend. Uh, it goes all the way up to about 51, 28 half or so. Uh, there was a huge fight here. You can see, and the re part of the reason why it's important, you can see that the, the very large lots, I didn't reset my platform, so this is MBO data here. It's very accurate in terms of the delta. Um, the very large lots were mostly flat yesterday as we were selling off. There was a little bit of selling, but it wasn't really aggressive. Like we hardly breached 10,000 yesterday on the sell side. So this was more of a market that's floating down, you know, by bids pulling uh, versus aggressors coming in and just hammering on those icebergs on the bid and selling the heck out of it. So what, what, it, what we did is, we came, we accelerated down into the 5115 area or so. And then we started to see really good lifting. You see those blue dots, really big blue dots. As the market was coming down, somebody was lifting the offer, lifting the offers. It was coming down. You could see the yellow dashed line are, is, represents the very large lots. And that's quite positive. You could see that it's greater than zero. Remember, zero is the open. Zero is the equivalent of the open yesterday, which was 52.11. And yet these things, the very large lots are positive on, on this session, despite all of the selling. So there was quite a bit of um, other time frame or higher time frame buying in the zone. So this zone is going to be quite important uh, we ended up settling at 5104, which is the absolute bottom of the zone, and it goes to about 5128 or so. That area, which is where we ended up putting in a top in the overnight session, is going to be an important reference going forward. Going through this will cause a lot of the people who ended up getting lifted buy this, these very large lots, those, those people are likely to be wrong because they were sellers. If very large lots are buying, then somebody had to be selling. And so I expect that any push above that 5130 area is likely to accelerate us right back into the 5150 and above. So this is an important area that you want to have a band on. Uh, it's an important stock zone, and we're in the middle of it. We're, we're opening right uh, in the uh, middle of it today. Uh, that's one important area. Yet this, this morning, the overnight session, it looks like a multi-distribution profile, but really it's just balanced with a very weak high. Uh, so we're remaining. We have the overnight point of control and the full session mid, full session VWAP on top of each other, and we're staying above settlement. This is, this is an overnight session that's, sa that's saying, hey, the pr whatever needed to be priced in has been priced in, and we are done uh, to the downside most likely. So if we look at yesterday's point of control for the session, you can see that it's right on top of settlement. So settlement which is in that zone settlement all the way up into this 5125 to 5130 area. Anything in there is likely to be quite noisy. Once the market moves away from that area, there's likely uh, to be risk that needs to be adjusted. And that's really the first thing I'm gonna be paying attention to. I'm out of time, folks. Thank you for 12 years of listening in. I know a lot of you here have been, um, have been following every episode for the last 10 years, all 2,657 of them. Um, I appreciate you listening to me, but you've heard it all. And uh, if you want to, you know, keep growing and so on, follow the pointers at the beginning of this video. You can always go back and watch it. This video will be permanently there, as well as all of the Trader bites that you can go back and watch and, and the thousands of videos that I've done for futures io and um podcast chat with traders all that stuff it's all there one thing you'll notice across the board 
is I have not changed how I trade for the last 16 years. It's been the same thing. It's auction first, figure out the direction of the auction, figure out what your bias is, have setups that trades the bias when the market is balanced versus imbalanced, take the trades that show up, don't go looking for trades, don't change your charts too much. It's been a very, very, very consistent process and focus on the process. So the goal is to be in good process, not outcome based. Don't worry about your trades winning or losing. That takes care of itself with your edge. Focus on process. That's what I wanna leave you with. Process, risk control, and take care of yourself. Forgive yourself for your mistakes. Do better next time. Good luck, and I'll catch you soon. Take care.